Think you're going? I got a new business. Sawdust. Sawdust? For the saloon floor. The pan nickel bag. Hey, well, I thought we agreed you weren't gonna hang around the saloon. I ain't hanging around, Pa. I'm delivering. Well, you just deliver right back to the carpenter shop. But Pa, I just swapped for this roof. Gave Tommy Davis six firewood customers for the silver slipper and the bucket of blood. No saloons, Daniel. You just stick to selling frog legs to the cafe. Yes, sir. Sure cuts down my profits. <laughs> we told you before. Get out. Oh, no. You won't be needing these supplies because you're leaving. Stay here, Daniel. Get out like I told you. I'm telling you two for the last time. Get off of that claim you're working or we'll drive you off. What's the trouble, Cusack? We're trying to get rid of these scavengers. They're working at old mine near the Glover diggings. We're not scavengers. The mine is ours. That's right. They staked a claim three years ago when the mine was abandoned. Scavenger claims don't count in my book. They count in the town book. That's all I'm interested in. You better take that up with Mr. Glover, Sheriff. He's the one that wants them off. It's their mine and they stay. You bother them again, Cusack, and I'll jail you. Okay, Sheriff. But like I said, you better take it up with Mr. Glover. We don't give the orders. Thank you, Sheriff. Help you with this. I thought I told you to stay put. I was just listening, Pa. You know, he's just where you can get hurt. Don't I have enough worries? Mr. Glover's the most important man in town. He ain't gonna like you going against him, Pa. I don't expect him to. Well, what are you gonna do? Whatever I do, I don't want you mixing in. It's too dangerous. Yes, sir. There sure is going to be a lot of trouble.
house, please. Welcome back to Glover House, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Charles. It's good to see you looking so well. It's been a long time. Almost six years. You know, the last time I came through that door, little Janice was sliding down that banister at me. She's quite a young lady now. I'll bet she is. You wouldn't recognize her. Jared, my boy. Hello, Sidney. How are you? It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> Charles, would you put Mr. Barclay's things in the East Wing, please? Yes, sir. Come inside, Jared. I've got a bottle of champagne waiting. Good. Yeah, this merger calls for celebration. That it does. Family well? Oh, they're fine. Just fine, Sidney. Merger papers all in order? I've got them right in here and ready to be signed. Good. Can that possibly be Janice? Yes. Had it painted three months ago, just before she went back east to finishing school. Beautiful, isn't she? She certainly is. It's kind of hard to believe that that's the same little girl who used to beg me for ice cream. Sometimes I wish she were still that same little girl. She's all I've got, Jared. I don't mind admitting this house is just a bit lonesome without her. I could imagine it is. The merger of the Barclay Glover Silver Mines. To the merger. Come in. Yes, Charles, what is it? Sheriff Barrett is here to see you, sir. He says it's important. The sheriff? Yes, sir. You mind, Jared? No, no, not at all. All right, Charles, have him come in. Yes, sir. You have a sheriff here now, huh? The last time I was here, all you had was a miner's court. Yes, we hired him three years ago. The town's been growing so fast, we had to get some regular protection, especially for the property owners. Afternoon, Sheriff. Afternoon, Mr. Glover. Sorry to bother you. Well, it's all right. Gives me a chance to thank you for catching those night riders last week. They've been getting away with a lot of ore. And no thanks necessary. This is Mr. Barkley. Jared, Dave Barrett. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. Same here. Barkley Mine? That's right. Well, Sheriff, what can I do for you? It's about that old mine between your claim and the Barkley diggings. The one those Chinese are working? Mm-hmm. What about it? Two of your men threatened them, told them to get off. They said they were acting under your orders. Yes, that's right. We need that old mine. You see, the Barkleys and I are merging. We're planning to extend those tunnels and join our main shafts. You can't do that. That mine was abandoned because the ore was low grade, left open to scavengers. Temporarily, yes. But now we need it again. The mine belongs to Wong Lo. This must be some kind of a joke, Sheriff. What is the law on that point, Jared? Well, most mining laws state that temporarily means 14 days. After that, the shaft is open for reclaiming by anyone. But my crew dug that tunnel. Unfortunately, Sidney, that doesn't have any bearing. Wong Lo and his wife have been working that mine for three years. Their claim is on the town books. They've got a right to stay there. A right? There wouldn't be any tunnel if I hadn't opened it up. And there won't be any town if those mines shut down. What do you mean, shut down? You see, Sheriff, our tunnels are getting so deep that we can't work them anymore without extra ventilation. We need that old mine for an air shaft so we can continue to use them. Those diggings are the biggest in the load. If they shut down, It'll bankrupt hundreds of people. There won't be any rim fire. Don't you understand, of Sheriff? Of course I understand. But you'll have to find some other way to keep them open. You just can't take Wong Lo's claim. You mean you would let this town die for a scavenger? Whose side are you on, Sheriff? When it's Night Riders, I'm on your side. When it's claim jumping, I'm with Wong Lo. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. We don't have any intentions of breaking the law. Look, Sidney, as long as this man has a legal claim, why don't we simply make him an offer and buy him out? Jared, I'm not much for buying what already belongs to me. I can understand that. But legally, there's no choice. You sure of that? Yes, I'm sure. All right. If it'll save trouble, go ahead and make him an offer. But if he won't sell... Now, maybe we won't have to cross that bridge. I hope not, Mr. Barkley. Because if you do, I'll be in the middle of it. <laughs>
Good morning. You are Wong Lo? My name is Jared Barkley. I'm one of the owners of the Barkley Mine. I have heard. Soon you will join us to the mine of Glover? That's right. As a matter of fact, that's what I came to talk to you about. Have you come with threats, Mr. Barkley? I don't believe in threats, Wong Lo. I've come to make you an offer. An offer? Mr. Glover and I would like to buy your mine. You will buy what you try to take? That was a mistake that I had no part of, Wong Lo. We'll give you a fair price, whatever you think your mine is worth. Glover deals in blows, you in words. Neither will drive me out, Mr. Barkley. The mine is not for sale. But now, wait a minute, Wong Lo. This is an honest offer. I've come in friendship. You must believe that. The message of the hawk is seldom brought by a dove, Mr. Barkley. <laughs> Ready, Pa. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there, Daniel. Boy, I'm hungry as a prospector's mule. What do we have it? Rabbit stew. Again? Well, you like it, don't you? Well, sure, but three times in a row? What's the matter with that? We ever thought of having. Beef stew or chicken? Chickens cost too much. Besides, I got the rabbits free. Free? Sure. Trapped them. <laughs> well, I hope you sure don't go to trapping bear. You know, uh, you shouldn't be cooking anyway. You know where you should be? In school. In school? Mm -hmm. But there ain't one. Daniel, what for? You're going on 11 years old now, Daniel. It's time you learn something besides mines and saloons. You're teaching me, ain't you? I do sums every day. Yeah, but sums and reading aren't enough. You need geography and history and things that take a real teacher. What do you mean? You're a real teacher. No, I mean somebody that studied it. Like they have in the big schools back east. Or in Stockton. I can't go clear to Stockton just to go to school. Who'd cook for you? Well, I'd eat at the cafe. And their food's no good. I get used to it. <laughs> Got used to rabbit stew, didn't I? Well, I better wait till we get a school here. If I go to Stockton, it'll ruin my frog business. <laughs> Mr. 
Sheriff. Oh, in here, Mr. Barkley. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt your meal. Oh, that's all right. Mr. Barkley, it's my son, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. I'm pleased to meet you. Yes, sir. Me too. What can I do for you? I've come to talk to you about Wong Lo. Have you seen him yet? Yes, I've seen him, but I didn't get very far with him. He's not exactly what I'd call friendly. Well, that's because folks have been so mean to him and his wife. He's really nice once you know him. He gives us kids rice cakes and paper... Daniel? Oh, yes, sir. I forgot. Why don't we talk in the office? Sheriff, how well do you know Wong Lo? Line of duty, mainly. Why? Well, do you think that if you went out with me to that mine, you could get him to just listen? Maybe. But I'm not going back out there with you, Mr. Barkley. If he doesn't want to sell, that's his business. I understand that, Sheriff. I just want him to understand how important that mine is to this town. I still don't think I should interfere. I'm not asking you to interfere. I just want him to hear me out. It's too much like forcing him, Mr. Barkley. Wong's had enough of that. All right, Sheriff. I'll go out and try to talk to him again by myself. But I think you're making a mistake. Sure hope Wong listens to him, Pa. Hmm? Because if he don't listen, Mr. Glover's gonna act. And somebody's liable to get hurt. That's another thing they teach you in school, Daniel. Not to listen in on other people's conversations. Barkley, I've changed my mind. I'm coming with you. I appreciate that, Sheriff. We are very grateful, very grateful. Yes, we thank you. And you also, Mr. Barkley. Pleasure to be of service. That thing's too heavy to move by hand, Wong. You ought to get yourself a mule. Mules are expensive, Sheriff. When a man has no money, he must depend upon his own strength. Yeah, well, money's what we've come to talk to you about. Mr. Barkley wants to talk to you some more. About selling the mine? Mm -hmm. I don't want to take sides in this thing, Wong. What you do is your own business. But that offer that Mr. Barkley made you before is it's important for a lot of reasons. I wish you'd listen to him before you make up your mind. All I want you to do is hear me out, Wong Lo. My husband, they have been kind. It will do no harm just to listen to them. Very well. Since you think it is best, I will listen. Wong Lo, do you know what a choke tunnel is? It is very deep and very hot. 
That's exactly right. So deep and so hot that men can't work down there. Well, the Barclay tunnels are almost that deep right now, and the vein is still descending. The Glover mine is in the same condition. Now, you know how much those shifts are changing? Whistles blowing all day long? Men can't stand it down there more than an hour at a time. We need your claim so that we can dig cross tunnels for more ventilation. Ling and I need it also, Mr. Barkley, to make a living. I can understand that. But I can guarantee you a substantial price for it so you can buy another business. Where, Mr. Barkley? Here, anywhere you want. It'll be a handsome profit, I promise you. And if somebody decides they want that business, will we be asked to sell it also? When Lynn and I came here three years ago, we only had a cart and sapling. We found the tunnel, planted the sapling. Now we have a mine and a fine tree of heaven. It is difficult to put down roots, then leave them, Mr. Barclay. It's difficult to ask you to, believe me. But it's not just for company profits. It's for everybody in the town. Ling and I are not treated like everybody. We'd like to help you. But we need roots. We cannot sell the mine. The day passes. We must complete our work. Scavengers understand as force. But don't worry. They'll get out. Not that way. We'll just have to find some other way to ventilate those tunnels. There is no other way. I've already talked to the best mining engineers. Well, I'm sorry, Sidney. I cannot agree to force. All right. Then find some legal way. Some loophole. Don't tell me you're squeamish about loopholes, too. Yes, I am. When they involve human rights. Jared, this is no time to shilly-shally. There's too much at stake. I couldn't agree with you more. All right. The circuit judge will be here tomorrow. We'll let him settle it. Incidentally, he's an old friend of mine. We'll see you at dinner. got to be there somewhere, Judge Power. We know the claim was registered. Oh, yes, here it is. Hello? Ling? I thought you said the name is Wang. That's his wife. He registered it on Chinese New Year's, put it in her name as sort of a gift. Actually, it belongs to both of them. I see. Those books were drawn up by a bunch of miners, Nathan, when Rimfire was just a camp. The old miners' regulations are as valid as law, Sidney, and the state recognizes them as such. Even now that you're incorporated as a district. I thought you said these people have been working this mine for three years. They have? According to the date here, they didn't register their claim until six months ago. Wong doesn't know much about our laws, Judge. It took him a while to find out about staking claims. Well, that's your loophole, Sidney. Under the State Exclusion Acts, aliens can't own property even when it's registered according to local mining laws. The acts went through last year, a couple of months before this claim was entered. Well, Jared, that should simplify things. I'm surprised you didn't check that date, Mr. Barclay. As a lawyer, you should be familiar with these new acts. I am, Judge, thoroughly. I lobbied against them. How soon can we evict them, Nathan? 48 hours. All you have to do is re-register your previous claim. All right, Sheriff, notify them. Is that a court order, Judge Power? Yes, Sheriff. Congratulations, gentlemen. Barkley. Is this the library? That's right. Sure is big. <laughs> Come on in. 
I'm looking for Mr. Glover. The cook said he was here. Well, he was, but he had to go into town, take care of some business. He should be back in a couple of hours. Mm. Is there something I can do for you? Will you give him a message? Sure will. Tell him that I won't be delivering his firewood anymore. His firewood? He's on my route. I bring it every day. Nicole Lowe. Made a deal with his cook a long time ago. Oh. And you probably don't know it, but I've been delivering his frog legs. I'll have to get one of the other kids for that, too. I see. Won't that put quite a dent in your business? Mr. Glover must be one of your best customers. Yes, sir. But I still won't be delivering them. Even if the other kids don't bring fresh ones and he gets sick on them. Why is that, Daniel? Because of Wong Lo? Wong Lo and Pa both. You want me to tell him that, too? Yes, sir. Tell him everything. Daniel. There's something I'd very much like you to understand. I don't like this business any better than you do. Mr. Glover likes it. You're merging with him. When I started that merger, I didn't know Wong Lo or anyone else would be affected. If I had any choice, he wouldn't be now. But I can't help it, Daniel. You see, that old mine belongs to Mr. Glover, so he has the right to do anything he wants to with it. That's the law. I don't care if it is the law. It's wrong. No, Daniel, it's not wrong. It's... Well, you see, the law isn't perfect. It can't cover everything. That mine's all Wong Lo has. Don't Mr. Glover care about anybody but himself? Of course he does. It's just that... He sure wanted Pa to care all right when he and that committee met. What committee? After Ma died, Pa decided that we was going back to Philadelphia to live. Then Mr. Glover and the committee came and said that the town needed protection. Pa was the best person for the job. Everybody realized it. Because winning the Medal of Honor during the war proved that he wasn't afraid of nothing. Your Pa won the Medal of Honor? Yes, sir. He's right. Then why ain't it protecting Wong Lo? Well, it's like I said, Daniel. The law is not perfect. In this case, it favors Mr. Glover over Wong Lo. What good is it if it favors one man over another? If it don't cover what's right? What good's Pa being a sheriff? Or you being a lawyer? What good is it? Come here, Daniel, sit down. You see, the law tries to be just. But if it isn't, it's usually because the people involved don't care enough to change it. You're involved, Mr. Barkley. Can't you help some way? I wish I could, but I'm sworn to uphold the law as it stands, just like your pa, whether I like it or not. Well, anyhow, tell Mr. Clover about the deliveries, will you, sir? <laughs> doesn't belong to us, but it is written in the book like all the others. It was written too late. They passed some new laws. Only citizens can own property. This is true, Sheriff. Really true? Yes, it must be so. Otherwise, you would not say it. The tree has taken root, but we have not. It is always so, Sheriff. Ling was born in this country, and I have spent most of my life here. But we are driven from place to place, like leaves in the seasonal wind. What was that you said about Ling, that she was born here? In San Francisco. Her mother was a servant in a rich house. Whose house? What's the name? Hamilton. Donald Hamilton. What does this mean? Why? You stay right here, Wong Lo. Understand? Stay right here till I get back. Nevertheless, you were ordered to evict those people. Not to question. I can't evict them. 
Ling Han is an American citizen. What? Oh, I don't believe it. They'd say anything to keep that claim. She was born in San Francisco, a few months after her mother went to work for the Hamilton family. Do you have proof of that? Dates all file in the city record building. Here's a telegraph, Donald Hamilton verifying it. Well, that's good enough for me. I know Hamilton, they wouldn't verify anything that isn't true. So, since Ling is a citizen, that settles that. Not for me, it doesn't. My crew dug that tunnel. And I'm not giving it up for any pair of scavengers. I don't care where they were born. Sheriff, Judge Power issued an order evicting those people. I demand you carry out that order. I can't. Ling owns that mine legal and clear. All right, Sheriff. If they're not out by the specified time, my men will do it for you. They can try. They'll come up against me and my deputies. Very well, Sheriff. That's the way you want it. It's not the way I want it. It's the way it is. Sidney, I've already told you I'll have no part of this. I don't understand you, Jared. What is it? You feel you owe these people something because you have more than they do? Is that it? It's much simpler than that. I have respect for the law. Oh, fiddlesticks. You may be willing to close down your tunnels, but I'm not going to close down mine. Merger or no merger. Then there's no point in staying here any longer. No, there isn't. Why don't you just go? Sheriff? Aye, sir. I'm looking for deputies. Anybody got time to help? What's the job? Protecting a mine. You mean protecting scavengers, don't you, Dave? Pays 50 cents a day. They ain't worth five a day. That's right. I'm not looking for opinions. I'm offering jobs. You want to work or not? I'll work, but not for any scavengers. Same here. Dave. That was Glover's mine in the first place. He wants it back. I figure he's got it right. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna side with scavengers, Sheriff. They go for all of you? But he does. Thanks anyway. Obeying the law doesn't seem to be too popular around here, Sheriff. I thought Mr. Glover's guests did all their drinking in his drawing room, Mr. Barkley. It seems I'm not Mr. Glover's guest anymore. We had a little difference of opinion. Oh? Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to agree with some of my convictions. Which are? <sighs> Similar to yours, apparently. What about the merger? That's off, too. Pa! Pa, they've got one low. Got him? What do you mean? There's a fight down at the mine. Go home, Daniel. Shut up! You stay out of this. I'll stay out of nothing, Cusack. Now, you let that man... You did that? Who do you think did it? It's not as it seems, Sheriff. They came here, this one and the other one. They told us we must leave. And when we refused, 
The other one took Ling and began to beat her. And I... I couldn't stand it. My fingers found the axe and I just couldn't stand it. It was done for me. Sheriff, for me. Don't cry, Ling. Afterwards, the others came and with the rope. He's lying. That murdering devil killed Pete in cold blood. It was for me. See how they beat me? Let him down. He killed Pete. We're gonna string him up. No. I'm holding him for the U.S. Marshal, Cusack. He's going to Stockton for trial. Now, for the last time, let him down. Drop it. All right, clear out. We're going to come and get him back. He ain't going to leave town alive. He is if I have anything to do with it. Now, you may change my mind about you. Everything all right, Jim? So far. Telegram get through all right? Yeah. Marshall and his deputies be here in a couple of hours. That's good. Mm -hmm. You got back quick, Pa. Did you get an answer from the Marshal? I'm dog tired, Daniel. How about some coffee? Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, ask a favor of you, Jared. A favor? Mm -hmm. Anything I can do. What's about Daniel? It's something I've worried about for a long time. Something I know his mother would have worried about if she was still alive. I don't imagine it's been easy trying to raise a boy alone. No, it hasn't. This town doesn't help either. You've seen what it's like, Jared, full of drifters, drunks, not even a school. There's no place for a boy to grow up. Well, I wouldn't worry about it too much. A lot of good men have come out of towns just like this one. Yeah, but most of them had two parents. Daniel's only got one. I can't even give him security. The sheriff lives from day to day, you know that. You know, it's a funny thing. Most of the kids I've seen don't seem to give a hoot about security just as long as they have love. Hmm. He's got that. All I can give. But if I should happen to get killed all of a sudden, he won't have that. He won't have anything. There's a boarding school in Stockton. He can get an education. Be able to take care of himself no matter what happens. I know it very well. The Stockton Boys School. Yeah. Well, I've written to him, taking care of all the details. They say that Daniel can enter any time. Jared, your stage leaves in an hour. I've saved the tuition. I'd appreciate it if you'd take him to Stockton with you and enter him. You told him about this? No, not yet. It's a little sudden, isn't it? From what I've seen, it's going to tear his insides out. What do you think it's doing to me? If I don't send him quick, I'll lose my nerve. Look, Dave, why don't you think it over a little longer? This town's growing every day. There's bound to be a good school here soon. I've thought about all that, Jared. It doesn't change anything. I'm still a sheriff, a man with a gun in his belly all the time. If that gun goes off, I don't want my son to see it. All right. I'll take him. But not on the next stage. I'm going to stay till that marshal gets here. But I don't want you to stay. If those miners start trouble... If they do, you're going to need an extra gun. And badly. All right. I better go. 
Talk to Daniel. Coffee ready, Daniel? Just about. Can I heat it some stew? Where's Mr. Barkley? He's keeping watch. Should I take him some stew? Sit down, man. Daniel, I want to talk to you about something. You remember how it was three years ago when we lived up in the hills in our mine? You mean the cabin? Before the claim jumper shot Ma? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. I remember everything. How she used to say poetry to me, fix my clothes, and how pretty she was. Yeah, she loved you very much, Daniel. She always wanted the very best for you. That's why we moved into town right after she died. I thought you wouldn't be so lonesome that I could take better care of you. Do. You take real good care of me. Well, this, this job keeps me too busy. You have to you have to cook and clean up. You have to wash your own clothes a lot of time. I don't mind. I always said it was good to know how to do things. Yeah, well, she meant more than just those things, Daniel. She meant an education. She'd want you to be in school right now. I know she would. Well, then maybe we ought to move someplace where there is one. Sheriff jobs aren't that easy to come by. I don't know anything else. I... I talked to Jared about it. Mr. Barkley? That's right, Mr. Barkley. What did you talk to him about? You're going to Stockton with him, Daniel. You're going to live at that school I was telling you about the other day. You... You're fooling. Ain't you, Pa? No. No, I'm not, Daniel. But I don't want to live there. I want to live here with you. No good here. Living next to a, a jail. Never knowing what's going to happen next. I don't care what happens as long as I'm with you. Well, I do care. You're going to get an education, Daniel. You're going to make a life for yourself away from here. Oh, Daniel, you'll like it. There'll be, there'll be a lot of boys. You'll make friends. No. No, I won't. I'm sorry, boy. You're leaving as soon as the marshal gets here. Now, go get ready. There's, there's lots of time. I'll, I'll do it later. After, after I get rid of all my frogs. You'll do it now. Right now. Yes, sir. For the best, boy, you'll see. Go on. They're coming, babe. Come on! You stay here, Daniel. Cover me from the side. Don't let them take me, please, Mr. Barkley. Don't worry, Wong Lo, they won't. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Get out of the way, you're gonna be hurt. I'm warning you, Cusack, and all the rest of you. Stay back or I'll shoot. You can't shoot us all, Sheriff. I don't want to shoot anybody, Mr. Glover, but you can't have Wong Lo. That scavenger has done enough damage. He's killed one of my men. And a merger that would have benefited the whole town. We're going to see that he pays. And I'm going to see he gets a fair trial. He's already had a trial. Been found guilty, right, boys? Ah, I'm warning you, Sheriff, for the last time. Stand aside. Not a chance. <laughs> Kill the next man that moves. Pa! Oh, Pa! Pa! Mm. Well, 
Well, Sidney, you came here to destroy law and order, and I'd say you've done a pretty good job. Is he hurt bad? You're pretty lucky this time. It's only a flesh wound. What you had to do it for? What for? We should help him like he's always done. <laughs> like he's done for a lot of you. Because Wong Lu was in trouble. He's always helped everybody when they was in trouble. Everybody. <laughs> Ever since he came into this town. Remember when the mind beans fell in your cusack? And how Pa stayed by you till the doctor came? <laughs> Fed your whiskey so it wouldn't hurt so bad. And how about the night you was gonna stalk to Mr. Corcoran? And how Pa fetched your wife? Just in time for a baby to come. He never left you alone, neither, Mr. Glover. Even if you are rich. Remember when your daughter was cut in that Snowden stage? And everybody said that they couldn't get through? You said you'd get through if it killed you. So you rode out. You and Pa. And when your horse went down, Pa brought you and Miss Janice both and say, he stood by every one of you, sometime or other. What? Why couldn't you stand by him? Why couldn't you? Well, gentlemen, in addition to everything else, it looks like you all have short memories. Stay where you are, Sidney. He needs help. You can help best by getting this rabble out of here. All right, men. Back to your jobs. And stay there. Go on. Sheriff, I've been a hard-headed businessman all my life. But I always pay my debts. Jared's right. We do have short memories. about coming out, Pa. I try not to. But I heard the shots. And I knew he was out here. Alone. I had to come out. I just had to. I'm glad you did, son. Do I have to go away, Pa? Really? I mean, can't I just stay? Can't I? You better. Can't expect me to eat at that cafe all the time. and I owe you much gratitude. Because of this, we have talked. We will sell you and Mr. Glover the mine. I'm happy to hear that, Wong Lo. It'll mean a great deal to the town of Rimfire. Money will mean much to us in getting a lawyer. Don't you worry about that. You've already got one at no cost. Not much of a case against you anyway, Wong. Cusack admitted that you did kill Pete in self-defense. Perhaps Ling and I will have roots after all. Well, Dave. Bye, Jared. Thanks for everything. Daniel, I want you to promise to take good care of your paw. Don't you worry. I will.
best, where do you think you're going? I got a new business. Sawdust. Sawdust? For the saloon floor. They pay a nickel a bag. Daniel, well, I thought we agreed you weren't going to hang around the saloon. I ain't hanging around, Pa. I'm delivering. Well, you just deliver right back to the carpenter shop. But, Pa, I just swamped for this roof. Gave Tommy Davis six barwood customers for the silver slipper and the bucket of blood. No saloons, Daniel. You just stick to selling frog legs to the cafe. Yes, sir. You sure cuts down my profits. <laughs> we told you before. Get out. Oh, no. You won't be needing these supplies, because you're leaving. Stay here, Daniel. Like I told you. I'm telling you two for the last time. Get off of that claim you're working or we'll drive you off. What's the trouble, Cusack? We're trying to get rid of these scavengers. They're working at old mine near the Glover diggings. We're not scavengers. The mine is ours. That's right. They staked a claim three years ago when the mine was abandoned. Scavenger claims don't count in my book. They count in the town book. That's all I'm interested in. Better take that up with Mr. Glover, Sheriff. He's the one that wants them off. It's their mine, and they stay. You bother them again, Cusack, and I'll jail you. Okay, Sheriff. But like I said, you better take it up with Mr. Glover. We don't give the orders. Thank you, Sheriff. I'll help you with this. I thought I told you to stay put. I was just listening, Pa. You're always just where you can get hurt. Don't I have enough worries? Mr. Glover's the most important man in town. He ain't gonna like you going against him, Pa. I don't expect him to. But what are you gonna do? Whatever I do, I don't want you mixing in. It's too dangerous. Yes, sir. There sure is gonna be a lot of trouble. Just 
Where do you think you're going? I got a new business. Sawdust. Sawdust? For the saloon floor. They pay a nickel a bag. Hey, well, I thought we agreed you weren't going to hang around the saloon. I ain't hanging around, Pa. I'm delivering. Well, you just deliver right back to the carpenter shop. But, Pa, I just swapped for this roof. Gave Tommy Davis six firewood customers for the silver slipper and the bucket of blood. No saloons, Daniel. You just stick to selling frog legs to the cafe. Yes, sir. You sure cuts down my profits. <laughs> we told you before. Get out. Oh, no. You won't be needing these supplies, because you're leaving. Stay here, Daniel. Like I told you. I'm telling you two for the last time. Get off of that claim you're working or we'll drive you off. What's the trouble, Cusack? We're trying to get rid of these scavengers. They're working at old mine near the Glover diggings. We're not scavengers. The mine is ours. That's right. They staked a claim three years ago when the mine was abandoned. Scavenger claims don't count in my book. They count in the town book. That's all I'm interested in. Better take that up with Mr. Glover, Sheriff. He's the one that wants them off. It's their mine, and they stay. You bother them again, Cusack, and I'll jail you. Okay, Sheriff. But like I said, you better take it up with Mr. Glover. We don't give the orders. Thank you, Sheriff. Help me with this. I thought I told you to stay put. I was just listening, Pa. You're only just where you can get hurt. Don't I have enough worries? Mr. Glover's the most important man in town. He ain't gonna like you going against him, Pa. I don't expect him to. But what are you gonna do? Whatever I do, I don't want you mixing in. It's too dangerous. Yes, sir. There sure is gonna be a lot of trouble. Welcome back to Glover House, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Charles. 